So I was beginning in the, the previous video, which I, it's probably going to load uh, after this video, if this, if this video is shorter, but, but I was previously speaking about how um, it can seem like, it can seem to me, I'm trying to, I'm learning how to relate to energy, right? And infinite energy and the infinite mass and the infinite capacity, right? Infinite capacity of the electron, which I'll say to flow energy from the zero point fields into the material universe, into usable energy for us, right? So that infinite potential transitioning in from, from infinity of potential to, I guess, infinite uh, possibility, excuse me, infinite possibilities of use in the material universe, which is the universe that we interact with, right? And not forgetting that all electric motors are a gravitational event. So does that mean that the electric motors are creating gravity? I feel like they are. I feel like the the um, the signal that is causing the magnets to spin. It seems like that signal is an anti gravity signal, right? So it almost seems like whatever signal we're presently using to make a motor spin could possibly use possibly be used at a much greater frequency and uh, capacity, or frequency and power level at a much higher level to create a gravity field in this space right here, in space, right? I mean, we're already creating one in the electric motors, right? That's an, ele that's an electric, that's an electrogravity event in there, right? So I, I look at it like it's an electrogravitic event, a variation of it, or, right? Or some kind of form or type of it, right? So, so John Searle talks about, or in, in, the, in my research of John Searle, I'm finding that it's, it's not so much anti-gravity as it is creating your own gravitational field. And when you do that, that will repel the gravitational field of the Earth. And now if we create maybe multiple fields, right? Like, like on, let's say, uh, like a box. This, we have one here, one here, 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 and on this side and this side, right? So on each side of the box, so one, two, three, four, five, six, right? I think it's six sides to a box, right? <clears throat> Let's see. Let's, there's a box right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So six fields. Let's say we create six fields. And what would that do? Just, just theoretically speaking from right now, just, I'm just kind of doing a thought experiment. It seems like that would allow us to control not just up and down, right, in space, but left and right, forward and backward, right? Six different uh, gravity generators, I'll call it that. Okay, uh, a lot of people are experimenting. I'm just going to call it anti-gravity, uh, but I'll say gravity field generators. A lot of people are experimenting throughout the world, and it's been said that in uh, I guess we can call it private industry or private research, um, people have been uh, running these systems for a very long time. I think actually more than a hundred years, well, well over a hundred years, maybe hundreds of years, right? So it's not something that's not understood. Um, and then there we have people like uh, Ralph Ring who talk about well when when peop when uh, when this civilization I'm using like a paraphrase right now when our civilization matures enough then we this technology can come out I do think that means to stop fighting to stop causing harm to one another I, I really think that's what what we have to do we have to make war forbidden war. I think war is forbidden, but I don't know why we keep getting into it, right? Why do we keep doing it? Now, people make, uh, I don't know if you call it an excuse, it's like, oh, well, it's profitable, so, you know, it, it's profitable to get into wars. Um, you know, the people that are causing the war, they want something, they want to take something that's that they think is theirs, so, so they're going to, uh, they're just taking back what's theirs or what they think is theirs, so they're trying to gain something, right, that they don't have or they, they think is theirs, or they think they're, that it should be theirs. And then other people have to get involved, like allies, I think we call them, right, allies, where we're like, oh, you can't do that because we're going to help them. And then it get, the war gets bigger and bitter, bigger, right? And in an extreme case, we have like a world war, which is absolutely terrible. Now, any warring whatsoever is absolutely forbidden. It's forbidden by nature. I, I'm going to say it that way because it's, it goes against nature to destroy things, okay? That's just... I'm just speaking as a thought experiment, okay? I'm just saying 
that if we're going to say something's forbidden, it does seem like war is the first on the list, right? Warring, causing harm, right? And we can put causing harm right up there with the war. It's like, don't we don't want to cause harm, and we don't want to cause war. We want to cause collaboration. We want to cause uh, solution-oriented worldwide collaboration. We want to cause uh, de-escalation, right? And whenever there's escalation, how do both sides immediately de-escalate, right? And to be masters of that, right? Like ninjas... Right, like, uh, like, um, you know, the highest level ninja you can get of de-escalation, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like a ninja of de-escalation, a ninja of not warring, a ninja of not fighting, right? What if that's the specialty? What's, what if that's the way, okay? And it comes with education. It comes with education right away, early, early on, right? Right away, uh, you know. It could be learned even before we start writing our name and date on paper in school, in preschool, right? It can come before that or with that, like right away. It's so important in value of life, right? Learning the value of life. Okay, so let's, I'm going to try to work through this idea of, of, of expensive energy in feeling like it could be enslaving us to a perception that there's no other choice. Right? There's, there's no energy out there, or, or there is, right? There is energy, but we absolutely can't use it. And we're not going to even say for sure that there's energy there. No, no, because we already talked about that. We, we already know that, you know, we said this and this and that, and, and, and there is no energy there. But, but if you want to say that there is, just know this. You cannot use it. You know, and this is what I, in my research and study, I come across these ideas, where this is what's being presented is like don't think for one second that there's any energy you can use i don't hear anyone saying oh yeah there's energy everywhere in space and all you have to do is use it in a different way like thomas bearden would say right energy from the vacuum which is both a book and a dvd science series right many many uh hours of of important information about learning about how to relate to the nature of energy right the nature of infinite energy that's my perception of that. And Tom Bearden talked about engineering reality. Now, nature does that. Nature has, in, has engineered, nature has self-engineered the creation of both the material universe and the, and the infinite zero-point fields, the infinite potential zero-point fields that sustain the material universe and made the system a self-perpetuating system, right? I'm using that word because the material universe powers, it uses its energy when it, when it reaches over to charge itself from the zero-point field, somehow, because it's a different kind of energy, I'll say it that way, it, when it gets recharged, it then powers the zero-point field. And it's an over-unity system because the zero-point field is powered. It, has, it contains 10 to the, to the 40th times more energy than the material universe, right? So... That's a beautiful system that the nature has designed, right? So what we're doing is when we plug into it, to the to the infinite will works of na the infinite will works of nature, as Tesla talked about, right? Plugging into nature's infinite will works, the will works of, of nature's infinite systems. When we plug into that system, um, nature's happy to, to 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 provide. Okay, just like a tree provides fruit, uh, you know. And there's moisture in the air, right? So the tree is getting moisture from the air, but also from, from rain and from rivers. So uh, everything we need is provided. And, but what we have to do is we have to ask, right? If we need help, we have to ask for that. Now, if you go on the internet and say, how can I build a free energy system? I have noticed that there's, a, there's how do I say this? It doesn't seem like that will be supported. Uh, that's not what I'm seeing right now. Um, and we, we can look again. We're going to look. I'll try to make some shorter videos so they load faster. We'll look again at that. I made a, I have a few videos that are loading. They might take a week to load, though. Uh, they're still loading right now. But I was looking up words and trying to figure out using the Internet how we can build a free energy device, right? And the Internet right now is not supportive of that. And, I, and, and what you have to do is, what I did, I mean, you don't have to do anything. You can do whatever you want. What I did, though, is I thought, where can I start? Let me start with people that have made systems. 
John Searle's name kept coming up. Tom Bearden was great for theory. I thought, let me study, study Tom Bearden. He's the master of theory, right? He put together, Tom Bearden was a researcher. He's like a research scientist, research engineer, engineer and he actually made his own uh, MEG, Motionless en uh, Energy Generator. And I think what that does is it oscillates magnets and ferrous metal to flow energy from the zero-point field, flow it, like opening a door, right? Just flowing it in, exciting those electron pairs, right? Amps, volts, amps, volts, amps, volts. Zero-point field, material universe. Zero-point field, material universe. That's just something I'm saying right now because that's how it seems to me, right? It's like going between these two spaces. Do we call them two dimensions? I don't know if, I mean, I would have to look up what dimension is. We'll look that up right now. We'll look it up, we'll, we'll do some research on, on the internet right now. Uh, okay, I'm going to stop this video, and I'm just going to keep making videos, and I'm going to try to make short videos that they're just kind of get into uh, kind of glancing at what is this world of free energy that everybody's talking about, right? What is it? And when I say everybody's talking about it, it's like either pe people are either talking about it like absolutely obvious, yes, of course, or absolutely no, no way, no way, there's no way, there's no way there's any energy, you know? Um, and when Richard Feynman and John Wheeler spoke of the, the energy in space, like by saying like in a teacup or in a cubic centimeter, a, cu a sugar cube, right? A cubic centimeter of space, there's enough energy to power a city or actually even power the world and to keep powering it without end because space replenishes itself at 10 to the 120th cycles per second, right? Which is one with 120 zeros behind it. That's the number. That's how fast the cycles are per second that nature works in. Um... I lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Oh, when John Wheeler and Richard Feynman spoke of that energy, people can still say, well, that's how much energy is in an atom. And what makes up an atom? Subatomic particles. And all subatomic particles are interacting with the zero-point field, right? Tom Bearden taught us that. And many others. I mean, many people. This is not just Tom Bearden. Tom Bearden studied other people, right? So we can also study all the people that Tom Bearden studied, right? By just looking at the references. The books have everything in there. They have other books. They mention other books to read. I'm just getting started in my collection here. Just getting started. And this is just a small part of the collection. But, um, uh, and a lot of books, sadly, are out of print. You can't get them anymore. But we'll go through these. Okay, we're going to go through this, uh, and I'll read and talk about what I'm reading. And, and we'll get the information there. But if you can find the book on your own, that's ideal. So you definitely want to try to get the book. But if you can't get it, we will cover it because I'm studying this myself and I'm sharing my journey of learning. That's what I'm doing. So this is for educational purposes. You can call it for entertainment pur purposes if you already have a free energy machine. Maybe you could be entertained by saying, oh yeah, I remember what I was trying to learning about all that. That's where I am right now. <laughs> I'm just learning about this. And, uh, but I do know that our, our entire electrical grid is a free energy system. And when the internet says like, oh, we could have had free energy, but we're, but when they start talking about historical things happening, those electrical wires are sending a free energy signal through the wires. That's why the wires are so small, right? Otherwise, those wires to power this many houses would have to be like four feet thick. Just think about that. That could be mathematically calculated, and people have calculated it. The wi our wires that power these houses, right? How many houses are there? You know, how many hundreds of thousands of houses are there and businesses as well in a city and we're powering all those megawatts are are coming through the wires the little wires right i don't know how big they are but like how big are they they're small you know for how much power they're transmitting and that's because that's just a free energy signal coming through there you know so what, what people are doing is generating their own signal which is just a pulsing signal right when you have a pulse that's that's negative energy Okay. Uh, many researchers have said that, that uh, when you have a pulse, a pulsing, that's negative energy. So um, it seems like the whole universe is a negative energy machine then, because <laughs> everything's pulsing, right? Um, anyway, we'll get to another video and we'll move forward here.